we are online now. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, thank you. Um, thank you for being here. So um, we're pretty excited to have uh, Daniel Pond and Kai give a talk on TCS Plus. Uh, before uh, I introduce the speaker, uh, I'd like to introduce the groups. So I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go around uh, first. Uh, we've got Andre with a group from MPII. Hi. Then uh, we've got uh, Benjamin Miller with a group from uh, UW Madison. And uh, Erfan with a group from Indiana University Bloomington. Hi. Um, Fangi with with a group from the University of Michigan. And we've got Caltech. Uh, hi. Zhang Yang um, from Virginia Commonwealth. Uh, we've got uh, K. Gobala Krishnan from East Carolina University. Um, Mark Selke from Cambridge University. So next we've got a group. Sorry, I'm kind of lost. This is uh, yeah. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I, so I'm kind of lost about which group you are. Um, we also... Okay, uh, we've got Siddharth from the University of California, Yavin. They present. Hi. Uh, we've got Sarachai from Michigan State University. We've got the University of Toronto with Chris Carvac uh, Carvacilis. Um, and uh, yes, we've got Yasamin uh, from John Hopkins University, and, uh, and of, of course we've got Daniel Bond uh, that's uh, going to sp speak um, about uh, the distributed all pair sort of path exactly. Uh, so the next few schedule talks are going to be as usual, uh, two weeks from now and four weeks from now. So the first one will be Michael Kearns from UPenn, and the second one will be Leonard Schulman. Um, and again, I would like I would like to encourage you to ask questions during the talk uh, after you unmute yourself. Uh, okay. So without too much more further ado, uh, so again, we're very excited to have Dan Upon give a talk uh, on TCS Plus. Um, Dan Upon is currently a professor at KTH uh, in Sweden. Um, he got his PhD from uh, Georgia Tech in 2011 uh, and was advised by Richard Lipton and uh, has been doing a lot of great work on graph algorithms and distributed and dynamic graph algorithms. Uh, today he's going to tell us about uh, a recent result uh, from Fox 17 uh, on computing all pair short, short F paths. Uh, in the distributed setting, and uh, exactly. Um, should it should it be my turn? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, all right. So, thank you for the introduction. Uh, thank you for having me here, and thank you for being here. Yeah. So today I will talk about distributed shortest path, all pair shortest path. And uh, I guess you know what I mean by exactly from the abstract. Um, by the way, I just realized that my video is not super fast, so I, you know, have another one down here, so you could see one of them. All right. Um, so today, this talk will be about the problem is called exact all parameters paths on these three networks, and in particular, we will look at the algorithm on a model called congest model. And um, one point that I want to make here is that the state of the art for this problem is pretty simple. And I really hope that somebody will you know, make more progress 
And so one open problem that I want just to leave to all of you now is, can we have an exact all patches part algorithm that is as fast as the approximate one? And the last point is maybe you don't like all patches part problem and you want to think about other problems. So same problem. Can you uh, add one for other problems in the distributed setting? So before I continue, uh, I would like to say that please feel free to ask questions at any time. And I think one of my video is gone, but that should be fine. So feel free to ask questions at any time. And actually, please do ask questions so that I at least see your feedback. And if you can turn the video on, that would be pretty helpful for me. OK. So here's the plan. Um, so I will start with um, defining the problem and give you a little bit of a background. And then we will look at the history of the problem a little bit. And then uh, I would, the main part, the technical part would be explaining this, uh, our pair shortest part algorithm, which is, which is Shen Chu Huang and Ta Chukong Saren Rap. And then I would just conclude with some final words. All right. Oh, sorry, I have to switch. So um, let's start with the problem. And I will divide this into three parts. I will define the model called contest, and then we will warm, get some warm up with some problems, and then we will jump to our own problem. So um, just to, to make sure to, to, to get some feedback a little bit from you. So can you let me know if you know already what contest is? Can you maybe raise your hand? I can probably see your video. Okay, maybe one group out of uh, many groups. So yeah, if you haven't seen it before, here is my way of viewing it. So you just, you just think of uh, a network that is modeled by a graph. And there will be two parameters that are usually important when we want to analyze the complexity here. Uh, one of the nodes and the other one is D, which we usually call pop diameter. So uh, this is for example, you have an analog to any other node in two hops, okay? So this is a weighted graph, but the uh, diameter we would always, we will usually refer to hop diameter, which means uh, you omit the weights. So these would be two parameters. And now as I said, uh, this, this is like the network of computers. So every computer or every node has its own information. So in the beginning, every node kind of know how it is connected to other nodes, to the rest of the node of the world. For example, node number four here knows that it's connected to one, three, and six with this width, four, one, and one. But it doesn't know anything else. No for information. And in the end, they want to be able to compute something together. You can pick your favorite problem now. And they want to be do it as fast or as efficient as they can. So what does it mean by efficient? So uh, there are quite a few ways to analyze the complexity of algorithms on this model. One, uh, one complexity that I will focus on today is called time complexity, or sometimes I, us I usually call it number of days and nights as follows. So um, you imagine that you start with day and night, every day in the morning, everyone gets to send log n bits of messages to everyone else picture I just but you can actually send log n bits and then in the evening the message arrives and at night everyone got the message and do their own local computation meaning that they cannot talk to each other anymore but we will assume that they have a free um, computation which means that they can solve any problem they want if they want to solve NP hard problem that's fine okay uh, so then open just yes. a small comment. Apparently, the connection is a bit spotty. I don't know if it's just on my side, but uh, maybe try to uh, uh, remove VLC, the VLC video that might solve it. Uh, in case that's what okay, is it? Yeah, yeah, that's. Oh, sorry about the in interruption. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, I need to find a way to remove it one second. Um, is it better now? Yeah, it looks pretty good. Thanks. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, one more thing. Okay, so now any calc. So I guess I guess I just already said that any calculation can be done in one night, and then the next day again, uh, every node send a message, log and bit message to everyone, and then again at night uh, in the evening message arrives at night they do local computation again. So the uh, the computation goes on like this days and nights, and if you can finish whatever you want in three days then we will say that the time complexity is going to be t. OK? So if, if, this does, if this is not clear, uh, we will see some example. But first, let me make some remarks. First of all, this is called congest model. And you may imagine that there are many other models in distributed computing. Uh, for example, one, one model that probably you see in the, when you go to Foxtalk is called local model when we have no limit per day. And um, distributed computing you know, is more, more than that. You, usually, um, other model, one assumption that we usually share is that we have free local computation, and we only count for communication. And you can see that the, the congest model is like, is like that too. So number of days that I mentioned is usually actually called number of rounds. And there, in this model, there are actually, I make many assumptions, you know. We have global clock, which means that everyone we wake up at the same time and they get to send message at the same time. No failure, if you send, fail, uh, if you send a message, uh, it will arrive, and no delays. If you send a message, it will arrive in the end of the day. And we will make assumption as though that everyone has a unique ID, meaning that everyone has a number that is different from other, and it will be end. And as I said, free internal computation. All these assumptions were made just so we can focus on one issue for today, which is the congestion issue. And maybe some of you might ask, can we assume that we know N and D because it might make our life much simpler? And yes, you can at least assume that that is the case approximately. And the last thing is that uh, in this talk, I will ignore logarithmic terms most of the time. So if somewhere you think it has to be there, I think you will be right. So um, maybe this is a good point before I show you some warm up question. Uh, any question for now? I guess not. Then I'll move on. So now I will give some uh, warm up questions. So the, qu the first question is called unweighted ST shortest paths. So here's the, diff uh, here's the problem. So you have two spatial nodes, S and T. And um, in the end, what you want to know, uh, and this graph is unweighted, by the way. In the end, you want S to be, to tell, to, to say out, like the distance to T, uh, sorry, T to say out the distance to S. For example, in this case, uh, T should answer true. Okay, so that's a question. Now, uh, if you just think for maybe 10 seconds, you probably realize that uh, there's a simple algorithm for this, and it just takes diameter time. If you don't see it yet, here it is. So basically, you just run a breadth first search algorithm, which looks like this. In the first day, you, uh, the first node S, the node S, will start the D of S, the breadth first search algorithm. So it pretty basically just tell everyone that this distance is zero because it's the source itself. And then at night, the neighboring node will be able to compute its distance. So now they will say that their distance is one, which will be announced the next day. And then at night again, the message arrives that the neighbor of the neighbor of S will know that their distance is two. And you keep repeating this. You can see that in diameter time, uh, everyone will be able to say the distance to S, right? And then they're done. So in D rounds, everyone can say the distance in part of the D can say that there is distance to S is two. 
Uh, any question about this one? So if not, so yeah, and it turns out that this is the best you can do as well. So you just need the rouse or the time. Now uh, let's uh, let's make a problem a little bit harder. So next problem will be unweighted all pairs shortest parts, still unweighted. So what is the goal? The goal is that every node should be able to say in the end what is its distance to every other node. For example, here node number six should be able to say that its distance to one is two, to node number one is two, distance to node number two is also two, and so on. Okay? And let me emphasize that every node just has to know its own distance to everyone else, but not the, you know, the distance between every pair. That is a different problem. Okay, now what can we do? What maybe I'll, I'll just give you five seconds to guess what is the running time you will need here. So one simple algorithm that maybe you will think of is running the breast first search tree from every node. So every node just running breast first search tree. Does it work? One problem that we have to worry a bit is that. Uh, maybe there, is, there will be some conflict between algorithms. Meaning, meaning the following, look at this example. Uh, if you run breast first search from one, two, and four, three nodes. In the second row of this, uh, when you run these three algorithms at the same time, you will send, uh, you know, node number three, you have to tell node number six that its distance from one, two, and four is three at the same time. So it has to send three messages. And you can imagine that if you have more nodes, it might have to send more. And this would be a problem if we have too many nodes, because in one round, you should be able to send only uh, log n uh, bits through an edge. But you, you don't have to worry about it. So one point to, um, I would like to make here is that all you have to care is the total number of congestion uh, I would just call it total congestion. What do you mean by this? So, so there's uh, one pretty general theorem by uh, Gaffari from PODC 2015. And actually, if you just want to talk about all patriarchal part, you just need something simpler, which is by Leighton, Mack, and Rao. It's called random delay technique. So the theorem says the following. So if you want to run many distributed algorithms in parallel at the same time, and now the congestion to be, um, you know, the upper bound, when you look at overall algorithm, over all the rounds, all the time to get how many bits you have you seen through an edge, that is congestion. Okay, okay, let me read this out. Over our algorithms and row, uh, the congestion uh, we see at most congestion bits sent through each edge. So if we define the congestion this way, and please remember this notion because it will be useful to understand our algorithm later. So then if you define it this way, then we can construct a randomized algorithm with the running time or number of congestion plus t where t is the time of the slowest algorithm. So basically, if you run many algorithms at the same time, what will slow you down is the slowest algorithm among many algorithms. And hey, Donovan. Donovan, the question. Yes. Hello? Yes, go Paul. Donovan. Yeah, so this is, I mean, you're doing something heavyweight, right? We already know how to do this in no offense time, right? There's, I think there's a paper by Roddy T. Pellet, they, they would even deterministic no offense, right? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's it's going to appear later. But, uh, yeah. but uh, this, yeah. Thing, this, yeah, this Gafari thing is too heavyweight. It's too general. I mean, yeah, but in, right? and it's heavy machinery will be useful for our algorithm later on. That's why I want to introduce it now. Okay, so, so yeah, it's good to remember it for now. Any other question? Okay, so I hope if you don't understand, uh, please ask me. I can explain it again. Oh, sorry, uh, Danupan, sorry, I'm still asking. So the main thing, so the latent max row is just the, the congestion plus dilation, right? You just, uh, is it the, I mean, just you do a random delay, right? Is that the thing? Yes. yes. 
So, but there's a log factor, or he removes the log factor, Gafar. Yeah, as, as I said, um, I always, uh, you know, ignore. Oh, okay. So this is just random delay. You you start the algorithm with some delay, and then that's it, right? Is that the same? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So so in the end, the trick is that you want to start different algorithms at different time, at different uh, like random time. Okay. 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 Yeah. And and now um. Now, now, just to make sure you understand this theorem, because it will it will be useful to understand algorithms later. Um, as a corollary, now you you can solve uh, unweighted or pairless part in all n time, because you are just running n brain first search algorithms, and for each algorithm, every node we have to speak only once. If you recall how the brain first search work, congestion will be just um, n. So if you plug in in this theorem. T will be D diameter and congestion is N. So the total time you need is N. Uh, any other question? Now I will move on. All right, so now our problem. Our problem is just similar to this unweighted or patchless part, except that now the graph is weighted. So this is the graph, one example. And in this case, you know, maybe the shortest part will look like this from one to six. And again, every node knows this local information, how it's connected, what are the weights of the edges. And let me emphasize two things. First, the weights of the edges do not affect communication. So uh, this weight between one and four of weight four, although the weight is four, the time you need to send a message from one to four is just one, one round or one day. And another assumption which typically made is that uh, we typically assume that the edge width is in the range 1, 2, 2 polynomial of n. So it's some integer that is not too big. And one advantage of this is that uh, to send the whole weight, you just need one round because you just need log n bits or big O of log n bits. Okay. So now what could what could, should we? What can we do with this problem? Um, I will just start explaining a few algorithms so that maybe you can try to come up on your own for now. One trivial algorithm is just to collect the whole network um, to one node. And know, you know, once we since we assume that we can solve any problem in one node locally, so everything you can solve NP complete problem if you want. And so, how much time do you need to collect everything to one node? It's just congestion, right? Because again, you just imagine that you send the, the input, you know, local information from everyone to one node. And then maybe there will be one edge that everything has to pass through. And that will need, uh, there will be, that will cause congestion of number of edges. So that's the time that at least we should try to beat the number of edges. So now one question is, can we improve the trivial algorithm? So I, let, let me uh, discuss two algorithms that we probably know from the textbook and see whether we, what, what we can say about them. So the first attempt, and ho I hope you remember this because this is one subroutine that we will need later. So what if you run red first search from every node? So what do we mean by this? It means that um, I would just pretend that my graph is unweighted by, you know, subdividing the edges. So for example, the edge between one and three, you have uh, weight three. So I just put two nodes in the middle so that I have uh, three edges in between. And then I just run brace first search, where in the first row, uh, number one here just sent to the neighboring, you know, red nodes instead of, you know, node far away. But you will realize soon that it's not hard to see that this algorithm is going to be bad. It's going to be too long if we have a large distance between some pair of nodes, because you really subdivide uh, the edges. We don't have any good guarantee here. So another attempt, a, a second algorithm, is uh, Bellman form. So the algorithm is pretty simple. Um, every time you learn about the distance of an Every, someone, you just tell that to your neighbors. So in the beginning, you just, you know, send out your own distance, which is zero. And then later, if you uh, start knowing some distance, you tell that to neighbor. Uh, let, let's look at example here. 
So maybe at some point, node number six here, node is distance to node number one through this red edge. So the distance will be five. So he will tell this to everyone. He says five. But maybe later on, uh, he discovered a better path like this. Four. Then he has to, again, announce the new path, which is four. Okay? And maybe he has to do, the, do it again and again and again, right? And he has to do that for this for about what he learned about distance to node number two, too. So he has to do the same thing for every pair, uh, you know, every this uh, every node. And so what we can say, one thing we can say about this is that the change of the distance from six to one, it will change only n times. Uh, and if you want to convince yourself quickly, just look at the shortest part three, rooted at one. Um, the next row of the Bellman Ford, uh, the node in the first layer of that tree will get the correct distance. And the next row, it will be the next layer and so on. So in the end, you can bow the total number of times that some node has to say something to be n squared, which means that we have a congestion of n squared. So conclusion is that if you just run Bellman for, you will need n square rows, which again is dis disappointing, I guess, because it doesn't beat be the number of edges, like you know, the trivial algorithm. Um, if not, uh, let me just summarize. And if you want to ask question before we move on, just let me know. So summary of this part. I have introduced you the problem, and the main problem that we will look at is the distributed weighted or pair of shortest part. And we, I have shown you two algorithms as a warmer um, that doesn't work. Multiple, you know, running breadth search from every node. This works for for unweighted case, but not for the weighted case. And Bellman for algorithm, they don't beat the the trivial algorithm, but they. As I said, please remember these are two algorithms. They will be useful later on. And in parallel things that will be useful to remember. First, the congestion, only the congestion matters. In the end, you just need to, to understand how long the algorithm takes and how much congestion it costs. And we have this algorithm that run a multiple BF uh, breadth first search. Hey, Danukon. Yes. I have a question. Um... C could you go back to the previous slide? I, I was just wondering, uh, how is the congestion n squared? Oh, um, right. So, so if you look at node number six, right? Mm -hmm. You just count how many, many times node number six has to say something out. Right. Okay. And the claim is that uh, he has to send an update of his distance to node number one only n times. Okay, so uh, if you don't see that, just uh, accept it as a fact for to do with uh, the breadth first search tree. Sorry, the shortest path tree. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now he has to send, uh, so, but he has to send an update of his distance to n other nodes. You know, he has to do the same thing for right. distance from two, distance from three, and so on. Right. So, uh, it, in total, you will see n, uh, he will can speak out, you know, at most n square time. So he, he will update at most n square times. Yes. And so this, this implies that the maximum amount of information in an edge is n squared? Right, because uh, every time, uh, if you look at some edge, let's say edge between four and six, right? Uh, when do you, do you need to send some information on this edge? It's going to be when node number six says something or node number four says something, right? And node number six, as I, uh, as I claim, is going to say something which is when it want to update its own distance. Okay. Does it make sense? Yeah. Yeah. And the same thing, node number four will say its own distance uh, in square times. Right. Okay. Okay. Thanks. No but, but just a quick clarification. Yes. Uh, so it's so it's but more accurately it's n times some kind of yes, right? Where s is the shortest part diameter, the distance, right? 
Yes. So, so yes. So if you um, yeah, if you can, if you want to introduce another parameter, then it will be n times the depth of the shortest part three, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah that's what but I. Yeah, that's I just what I'm calling as yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm calling a shortest part diameter. This yes. Right. Right. Yeah. right. right. Yes, but um, yeah, I, I don't want to introduce another parameter. Okay. So that's um, the conclusion of this part one. Now, if you don't have any other question, I will tell you a little bit of what happened so far. And um, there will be quite a few, uh, quite some information, but if you don't want to, you know, bother with a lot of information, uh, this slide should be enough for you. So basically what we know is that this problem requires omega of n time, even if you want to approximate the distance. And I will just tell you why in, uh, soon. And also, if you allow approximation, you can actually match this running time of ON. So ON is the best you can do with 1 plus x1 approximation. Um, but it turns out that for if you want exact solution, the best we can do is n to the 5 over 4, which is going to be the next part of this talk. Now, now let me tell you a little bit about um, what happened. And my point is that everything is uh, I think the state of the art is pretty simple, at least on this page. So why do we have this omega and lower bound? Just think of this graph where you have a star and look at one particular node, one, node number one here. So now, uh, you know, how, how can one, and let's say that the, 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 air, the weight of the edge from one to two is zero. So to, for one to be able to say the distance to everyone else, it means that it has to learn about uh, the value of the edges of all other edges in this graph. And since these values are independent, uh, it's not hard to argue that you will need uh, n bits to, to send through the edge from one to two. So this is an informal argument, but you can make it formal pretty easily. Okay, so ON is pretty obvious lower bound. And the upper bound is not also not hard. So I already told you that there is this one idea that you run, uh, you pretend that but the graph. Dhanupan, just, just a clarification. Dhanupan? Yes. Hello? Yes. Yeah, so, but this, so, this omega n also follows from that diameter, right? The approximation. Probably not. Yeah, but, 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 uh, then, but then you have to talk about uh, it's, it's not for any approximation algorithm, first of all, if you talk about an uh, unweighted graph. Does that answer your question, Gopal? But um, even for that, let's let's keep it on. So, but even even for the dam, but even the diameter shows the approximation even for unweighted graph, right? Yes, but that's not for any approximation. Oh, uh, that's true. yeah, that's true. yeah, yeah, not constant. Right? And, and it's a little bit more. You don't need that for, at least for the weight here. Yeah. But you are absolutely okay. right. Okay, and and upper bound. So I, I already told you before that um, you can just. One idea is to subdivide every edge by the uh, by the weight, right? And then run great search from everywhere. But that's a bad idea. However, if you uh, if you are happy with some approximation algorithm, sorry, approx uh, some errors, then then it turns out to be a good idea. So uh, let me just give you an example here. So look at this graph on the right, and now um, you see that I have this weight thirty nine. What if I change it to forty? And basically, what if I change every edge weight to a multiple of 10? And then uh, I just subdivide the edge weight by this, you know, multiple of, by multiplicity of 10, for example. Uh, if the weight is 40 here, then I just put uh, three, three nodes. So you have four edges here. And I run breast first search algorithm. So instead of having 40, you know, steps on this edge from one to three, I just need four steps. So I can just save something up, okay? And by, you know, uh, balancing parameters correctly, you can just use this kind of trick to, to make sure that you don't have much error and the prefer search algorithm can finish in all in rounds. So that's, uh, that's basically the idea. You just, you know, by allowing some error, you can run prefer search from every node. 
So, um, any question about this part? So, so then, okay, now this is pretty much what you need to know about all patches of part in the weighted case to start with. But um, now let me zoom out a little bit and talk about more general problems uh, for other cases. First of all, let's talk about uh, this is the, the complete, more complete problem of the all patch of this type problem. I already mentioned the weighted case here in the red. This was already studied as well as Gopal pointed out. And you can also prove the lower bar of omega n. And in fact, um, it holds even for the simpler problem called the diameter. And for, even for some approximation algorithm, but not for any, it's just for some. And we have an upper bound, which is deterministic, and met that, that match the lower bound as well. So uh, just to conclude, and, and, and also for the weather case, you can get um, the de deterministic algorithm as well. That is by Lensen and Pachamir. So basically for the unweighted exact and for the weighted approach, both in both worlds, you get a tight upper bound, deterministic. But for the weighted exact, for the green part here, um, at least up to 2016, we don't understand just the trivial algorithm where you collect everything to one node. Okay, that was the state of the art. And an obvious question is, can exact algorithm be as fast as, a can we get all n time for the way that exact case, exact case? And actually now let me zoom out even a bit more. And again, if this is too much information from, for you, um, feel free to sleep for a few minutes. I will wake you up. So if I zoom out a little bit more, um, you can actually ask the same question for many other problems. So what happened is that um, in the distributed setting, in this congest model, in the last two decades, we know quite a few upper and lower bounds. Uh, for the lower bound size, we know lower bound of basically two forms. Actually, we know a bit more now, but these are the, the, the common two forms. One is in the form of root n plus d, and it usually holds for, uh, for even for some approximation algorithms. And this holds for, for example, single source to this path, minimum spanning tree, and many others. And the other kind of running time is omega n. This is for all pair to this path, uh, diameter, and so on. And then if you now from the algorithmic side, from the algorithm's point of view, uh, we have kind of tight approximation that has been developed in the last 10 years um, in the following sense. So we, for, for problems like single source this part, mean cut, minimum spanning tree, and so on, we have root n plus d upper bound. And, but it's a one plus epsilon approximation. So pretty much it's matched the lower bound stated above. And for problems like all patch of this path, and even you know, diameter and so on, you have big O of n upper bound and one plus epsilon approximation, which match the lower bound above as well. So you can ask the same question. Um, can exact algorithms be fast, be as fast as the approximate one for all these problems? Okay. And to me, um, Asking question for all patch of this part is a good starting point because the literature seems much simpler than other problems. Um, and what we know so far up to this date that I will just um, it, that I will tell you in the next slides is that we only know it and only for the shortest path problem. So now let me zoom in again to the shortest path. And again, if this kind of confuse you. Um, you know, go sleep for a few minutes if it's too much information. So let me remind you what happened so far. So until 2016, we know that for single source to this path, we have a lower bound of root n plus d, which holds even for approximation algorithm. algorithm. For exact algorithm, however, the best we know is just bare manifold, which has O n time. And for all pairs to this path, uh, the best lower bound is o n, omega n. The best upper bound is O n for and is one plus epsilon approximation. The exact algorithm, we don't know anything. 
Now, uh, we start to know uh, quite more, much more than in um, 2017. So first result is by Sankowski for single source choice power. So uh, he got this running time. You don't have to worry about, about it too much, about you know, exactly what, what this means. But basically, this can be written as little of n, something smaller than Uh, running time of uh, this this kind little n plus d, so it's getting closer to the appro uh, what approximation algorithm looks like, but it doesn't match the lower bound. And then for the all pair shortest path, uh, there are two in independent results. One result is by Sanko, uh, by uh, Elkin, and the other one is by is 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 uh, as I'm talking about this talk, uh, Huang. Uh, by me and Sarah Nurak. So Elkin got n to the five over three, which is a bit better than number of edges than the three year algorithm. And we got n to the five over four. Uh, this is the best algorithm so far. And I think one interesting thing about this uh, result is that it's also the first paper that the scaling technique in the distributed setting. And because of that, uh, there are two later, it kind of leads to two independent results um, for the single source shortest path. So these two, and the, um, I'm not going to go into much details, but the, currently the best algorithm is by this one, uh, by Sebastian Krimiker and I. So um, a summary of this part. So we know a lot of quite uh, tight approximation algorithms. And um, we have some progress on the exact shortest path problem. And um, the state of the art for all pair shortest path is pretty simple right now. So I really hope that somebody can push further and get something better for all pair shortest path problem. That would be the first um, open problem. And the other problem is, can you prove some gap between exact and approximation algorithms for some natural graph problems? And the last question is, um, can we get the range time of the chi little of n? Other problems like mean card, max flow matching, and so on. So before I move on and explain our algorithm, maybe it's a good time, it's a good time for questions again. So I guess no question. So um, so then now I will start explaining the algorithm. I'm kind of, I, I, uh, the organizer, please, please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think I will have only 10 minutes. So I will just, um, just describe the algorithm briefly, just to give you um, how this, this looks like. So, so this is what we want to prove, just one more time. So we want to show that this will all have to this part, the exact way the case can be solved in n to the five over four times. So, um, and the, I, I, this part will be organized like this. So uh, first I will talk about uh, the scaling technique, which you probably have seen before, uh, have heard of, I have mentioned it before. And then I will talk about two special cases that we, that we should show first. The first one is called edge hop or pair path. And the second one is called reversing the knowledge. And then I will tell you how to put everything together. Start with the scaling technique. So, so as I said before, this, this technique was known for a long time from Fox, from uh, 30 years ago. It was used in many uh, classic centralized algorithms. Um, and basically, you can think of it this way. It is a way to reduce a problem, a weighted problem, to an unweighted one with simpler weight. Uh, actually, no, not, not unweighted, but something close to unweighted. It's, uh, it will have simpler weight structure. And the idea is that we will have many iterations. And in the i iteration, we will look at the i bit. Or we will solve the problem at the i bit. So this is one example here. So in the first iteration, we'll, you will look at the first bit. And then the next iteration, you will look at the second bit and so on of the weights. 
So uh, this is a little bit more detailed example. Um, suppose I have only two bits in the graph, in the weights. So the weights is at more three. In the first round, I just construct a new graph where I just pick the first bit here. And then I just solve all pair to this part or single thought to this part here. And then using some magic formula, I will look at the second to construct a new graph, but the graph now look a bit more complicated. It's a weighted graph, for example. And then you solve the problem on this graph. And you keep just repeating this. If there is a third bit, then you look at the third bit, you solve the problem on the third bit. And once you are done, now you just claim that the result will be just the shortest part three that you get in the last graph. For example, here in G2, this is the shortest part three. So, you know, the, the, the blue, the thin, uh, the thick edges here. Shortest part three. The claim is that that is the shortest part three in the original graph. Okay. So, uh, how does the scaling help? Um, the idea is that you can see that the square is pretty simpler compared, compared to the original graph. For example, if you look at the first iteration, you only have weight zero and one. So it's much simpler than the original, original case. And in other iterations, uh, it may be more complicated, but um, you have, but something we can claim is this. You have, first of all, we have weighted diameter, ON, meaning that the distance between every pair of nodes will be at most n. Okay, you can see that this is trivial, trivially true for the first for the first round where you, have one. but it's also true for other rounds. But it also may uh, create some complication. First of all, um, it creates the graph that you have to look at is uh, and is going to be undirected in the sense that the weight from two nodes from i to j will be different from for the weight from J to I. You can call it asymmetric or directed. And the weight might be zero, even if you start with a graph without weight zero. Okay, so from now, uh, this is gonna be what uh, the scaling technique gives us. And so from now on, I'm just gonna remember, uh, we, we just have gonna solve the problem on this structure. If this is too complicated for you, just assume that the graph is zero and one, but note that this is a bit too simplistic. So sometimes if you solve the problem on that case, it's not gonna solve the problem on the general case. Um, any questions so far? I guess not. Okay, so, so now we know something about the scaling technique. Now I'm just gonna tell you two, uh, two special cases that we want to solve. So the first special case is called Eshkop APSP. So the goal for Eshkop APSP is that um, you just want to know the distance, but it's not between every pair, but between every pair such that the shortest part between them is at most H. So you have parameter H here. Um, for example, let, let's look at this example quickly. So the shortest part from one to six in this, this graph is four. But if I set H to be three, then it means that one doesn't need to know the distance to node number six, okay? So this is a special case of the all pair to this part, because if you solve all pair to this part, you know the distance between every pair, right? And H hop distance just asks for something less. It's just between pair that is not too far away in terms of uh, shortest path. Okay. So what do we know about this problem? If you solve the problem naively, you can just solve, uh, you can just run Bellman for, for H browse. And it's not hard to analyze that the running time of that Bellman for algorithm will be NH. So um, I have some explanations, but since I'm running out of time, um, again, it has something to do with shortest part three. Now, what we can show is that this problem can be solved in N root H browse. So we improve this dependency on parameter H a little bit more. Okay, um, and this alone actually gives you n root H, uh, n root N time al already. So um, since I'm running out of time, I will just give you a, an idea quickly. The idea is that, uh, maybe let's just look at this graph. Um, you, what you don't like about the graph that we are looking at right now is that you don't like zero edge weight. 
So what we are going to do is that we're just going to change hero to something else. And then we just run um, breakfast search tree from everywhere. And then we will look at a uh, user use the fact that we are interested in the part in shortest parts that has at most that the error that you're gonna get is gonna be small. In particular, we're gonna have additive error of something called uh, of root edge. And we can fix that error using the method algorithm. So you somehow kind of mix this breadth search tree with the Bellman for algorithm to solve the problem faster. So that's the first part. Um, I'm just going to kind of skip detail. So, uh, yes. Then run also don't feel too pressed by time. You can take a few more minutes if you want. We started like a few minutes late and anyway, it's, I mean, it's not a strict limit. Oh, okay. Thank you for letting me know. That's great. Yeah. So, but, but um, can you raise your hand if you actually want to know about how we solve this more? Uh, I, I already said, uh, okay, okay, good. I saw some, okay. Uh, so let, let, let me let me go slowly, okay. So imagine first that if you don't have zero edge way, meaning that every everywhere is in, uh, integral and it's, it's like one, two, three, and so on, right? What you can do is just, you can just run breadth first search tree from every node. Um, and you can analyze the range time of that to be ON. Uh, why is that? Because I know that the weighted diameter is O n. So, you know, if I just pretend that if, uh, you, you have a weighted graph, you just run breadth first search tree for O n rounds, and the congestion will be just O n. So in the end, you just need O n time, which is great. It's even better than what I claim. But now uh, we cannot run um, breadth first search tree because of this zero edge weight. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna change it to something a bit small, uh, and the right parameter turns out to be one over root h. And then we can just gonna run breadth first search again. If you look at the, the graph on the left side here, so now I change it to like the graph on the right side, and I go, I'm gonna subdivide every, uh, every h by a factor of one over root h. So if the h weight is n before, like h between one and two, uh, I will see um, like n root h nodes on this edge. And now I run breadth first search tree here. So now the running time of the breadth first search tree to go from node number one to the last node will be n root h, right? It actually from one to two already, you need n root h. So now this step, when you run breadth first search tree, you will need n root h time. And what does this breadth first search tree give you is the distance in this new graph, which is not the real distance in the original graph because you have some error. But since I introduced only very small weight, small weight or the zero weight edge, I can bar the error, at least for the uh, small part. So I have this error of one over root edge for each edge, and I have I'm interested in edge edges, so the error will be just root edge. And now I run Bellman form, and if you recall, <laughs> what does Bellman form do? It tells you uh, a node kind of broadcast its distance every time it improves uh, its own distance to someone else, right? But you know that you know you already have this, but that is pretty close to the real distance. So the node will not say something too often. In particular, it will say something only through the end root edge time. And that's why we have end root edge upper bound in the last step. Uh, so that's a round. Uh, good, quick question. Donovan? Hello? Yes, go for Yeah, so this is only for zero one weighted graph. This H chop A, P, S, P, you are doing it in N square root of H rounds. What about, uh, I guess this is only for the first uh, iteration in the scaling, right? Later, the weights are not zero one, no? Yeah, uh, but if you look at this example that I just gave, right? It's, it's also not zero one, right? It's like you have N in the first edge. Right? So, the important thing here is that you are only interested in shortest paths that contain H edges. So the, the weights are not important? Uh, the weights are important. The only important thing is that the total, uh, the weighted diameter is the O of M to begin with. What, what? Again, sorry, I didn't get to the, the weighted diameter is the O of M. Oh, that's okay. Okay. So 
But why are you saying in your slide zero one weighted graphs? You are only saying zero one. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, it's oh, oh, oh. I, I, I should say that for it, uh, yeah, it, for zero one weighted graph, it's easy to see and it works for general weight weight structure as well. Sorry. So the so but even in general, the difficulty is zero weights. Yes, yes, because you cannot run base base person zero weight. It gonna kill uh, you know. You cannot make progress. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, it, it's not trivial to see that. But you know, breath first is the idea is that you want to make progress all the time. See the way. What about the arbitrary weights? Like there can be many classes of weights. So yes, even then, fine. it's an issue. Yes, it's huh? fine as long as the weighted diameter is open. Okay, I mean that is the shortest part diameter. Is that the shortest part diameter? The, uh, the weighted I, diameter. Weighted diameter. The, the weight diameter is the is is that the same is that the same as the shortest part diameter? That means the number of edges in the long no, no, no. the number of arms. The distance between every pair of nodes. Yeah, the number of the maximum number of arms in the in the diameter, right? No, no. Ah. The uh, the distance between every pair. You mean the weighted distance or the number of arms? Weighted distance. So uh, since yeah, I'm running out of time, let me take. Go for we we can uh, let me take your question maybe later or, or, or offline all right okay. so sorry sorry so um kind of brushed over before but like sorry uh, did you you say something yeah I mean I mean I, I, maybe the confusion is coming from like definitions coming that you talked about in the slide or two before but we didn't. Uh, sorry, sorry. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so, but I guess I, I, so when I say weighted diameter, it means that, you know, the distance, like the really, the real distance between every pair. Okay. I, I, I yeah. Sorry. So, if you, uh, if you have more questions about this case, maybe I can take it maybe after, you know, after everyone, you know, we, we finish or something. So now let me just define another uh, special case. So reversing the knowledge is a fresh problem. So even if you don't understand what happened before, you can still understand this case. So the problem is this. So uh, it's called reverse R-sync choice paths. So in this setting, you just have R-sync nodes. And we assume that every node, V, knows the distance. Vt, basically the distance to the sinks. So for every sink t, so if you look at the picture, this node v and this sink t, v know the distance to t already. In the end, what happened is that t already also know the distance to v. Okay. So again, why this? Why is this a special case of all pairs to this part? Because if you solve all pairs to this part, t will auto automatically know the distance to v. So you don't e even need uh, this, you know, extra knowledge, okay? But now, now the question is, if we have this extra knowledge, can we do something better? And again, the trivial algorithm is just NR routes by just sending all this distance pair, like broadcasting. You, you can see that the, the congestion will be just NR. So um, we show that actually you can do a bit faster. You can do and root R. And since I'm running out of time again, let me just uh, say quickly. So the main idea is that you want to send the distance through the shortest part, you know, send, send this knowledge. But then maybe some node or some edge has to handle too many, too many information. And in that case, we're just gonna identify that edge and just broadcast the distance. So we will identify uh, roughly root R spatial nodes with a lot of congestion and handle that separately. And for nodes with small congestion, you don't need to worry too much. Um, okay, so here's a summary of this case, uh, of this part. So we have three tools, a scaling technique, which allow us to have simple weight structure. And in particular, uh, the weight the diameter is 4N. And, um, we want to, we can solve the edge hop 
AP uh, all pair shortest path, which means we are interested in just um, shortest path with small number of uh, edges. We can do it a little bit faster than trivial, faster than NH. And then we can solve the reverse knowledge or reverse RC shortest path problem a bit faster than trivial, which is n root r. And now um, you just combine this, all these steps together. Um, just, just the idea why we get this running time of n to the 5 over 4. Uh, the idea is this. This is not completely correct, but it is, it's just intuition. So if you just run the algorithm naively, you know, collect everything. And the first two tools together kind of give you the first improvement over this n, so it becomes root n here. And then the last two give another root improvement, so it becomes n to the one fourth over here. So um, I will just now just state the algorithm quickly, and then I'll just skip to the conclusion. So the algorithm is just you just have four steps. So you sample root n spatial nodes called centers. That's the usual thing you should do for the shortest path. And then you run these first two, h hop or pair shortest path. And then you, run, um, you broadcast the distance between every center. Or reverse knowledge. And the last step, you have to run the first two again by a modification of it called modified h hop or pair shortest path. Um, it might not make total sense to you why we, why we do this. If I have 10 more minutes, I can explain it to you. But since I don't, let me skip the, uh, the analysis and just jump for the, to the conclusion. So, Dhanupan, oh, hello? Yes, yes go, Paul. Uh, just a question. So, so the, this is the property of this, the, the scaling algorithm that the weighted diameter is O of n? Yes, it came. Uh, that's what scaling gives you. So, regardless of the weights, regardless of what regardless the weights are. of the original weights. Huh? Yeah, regardless of the weights. Oh, regardless of which. And second is yeah. what is the message complexity of an algorithm? Um, it can be like m times the number of rounds. I haven't anal analyzed it, but I, I I would guess it's really a lot. Right, it be it can be as much as m times the number of rounds. Right, that's of course. Uh, that's I guess so. I guess so. I I it's just I didn't analyze it. Okay. All right. Okay. Mm. Okay. So, so, okay, conclusion, how did we solve this part? Basically, to me, it's like you just discover that scaling technique can be useful. And then we, uh, there are some two special cases that turn out to be important. And we, you know, somehow hack away to get some improvement for two special cases. So, an open question for you. Can we at least solve these two special cases or one of them in ON time? Right now, I don't know how to do that. And how about single search this part? As I said, um, once you found out that scaling technique can be useful, the um, Gaffery and Lee can use it with some other techniques, can get some improvement. And I and Sebastian Kriniger get further improvement, but that came from viewing scaling technique from a different perspective. In particular, you should think of it as um, approximate distance, you know, approximation algorithm, but with some constraint called no local improvement. Um, I think it's pretty nice view. And if you want to know more, either read our paper or the, the original view actually came from Klein and Subramanian. So maybe you can read that as well. And we know a lot of Klein approximation algorithms, but we have, I think we still don't have much progress on understanding exact algorithm, especially shortest parts. So open problem, the first one, can you solve shortest path either, you know, as well, uh, you know, as quick as the approximate one for single source and all pairs? And how about other problems? How about, uh, do, we, uh, do we know anything that is in between, uh, that has running time between n and n squared? All pairs shortest path right now is one candidate but I'm not convinced that it, it will be the case. So we'll see. So thank you for your attention. Let me know if you have more questions. Thanks. Uh, so yeah, if there are any questions, uh, 
now is the time before we, we go offline. Um, thanks for the talk. What is the best for SSSP now? What is this new result? Yeah, um, it's, it's this one by this one, clinical and it's, uh, the running time is complicated. You have two algorithms. So um, basically, it's the minimum between root ND and root ND to the one fourth plus something. Okay. Other question? OK, uh, we can also take questions offline afterwards if you if you want to stay and, uh, and ask uh, more. Uh, before we do so, I'd like to mention uh, that uh, the next talk is going to be two weeks from now. Again, it's going to be uh, Michael Kearns from UPenn. Um, we had uh, also 10 viewers on YouTube today. And um, again, before signing off, I'd like to thank again uh, Dan Upen and uh, also behind the scenes, uh, people helping uh, for TCS Plus, uh, Anindia Day, Gotham Kamath, uh, Ilya Rosenstein, Oda Dregev, and Thomas Vidic, who is also here today. Thank Thanks. you. And uh, thank you. Yeah, we're going to go offline now. <laughs>